The editorial board of the New York Times called the fact that former President Trump is poised to reclaim the Republican nomination for president a tragedy. With Donald Trump's victories on Tuesday, he has moved to the cusp of securing the 1,215 delegates necessary to win the Republican Party's presidential nomination. The rest of formality, the board wrote this week. The party has become a vessel for the fulfillment of, of Mr. Trump's ambitions, and he will almost certainly be its standard bearer for a third time. This is a tragedy for the Republican Party and for the country it purports to serve, it continued. Trump has demonstrated a, con a, con a contempt for the Constitution and the rule of law that makes him unfit to hold office, the editorial reads. But when the, an entire political party, particularly one of the two main parties in the country, as powerful as the United States, turns to an instrument of that person and his most dangerous ideas, the damage affects everyone. After Trump's sweeping string of primary victories on Super Tuesday, former United Nations Ambassador Nikki Haley, his only challenger remaining, dropped out of the contest, dropped out of contention Wednesday. And although Trump has yet to officially claim enough delegates for nomination, Haley's exit signifies the beginning of what is widely expected to be a rematch of the 2020 election between Trump and President Biden this fall. Without a sufficient number of Republicans holding positions of power who have shown that they will serve the Constitution and the American people before the president, the country takes an enormous risk, the editorial board wrote. A party without dissent or internal debate, one that exists only to serve the will of one man, is also one that is unable to govern. Well, uh, I'm not going to read the whole article by New York Times because they're they're not an organization I'm really that big a fan of. I, I always remember in 2020 they endorsed uh, Warren and Klobuchar for president at the same time, and it was so weird because you know Warren's considered this progressive, or at least much more left leaning than most of the other um, Democratic candidates in that field, and then. Klobuchar was trying to do the whole I'm a moderate thing so it's like you, you're just endorsing people because of their gender not any like true ideology um I have to say when they talk about him demonstrating contempt for the constitutional rule of law yeah you can claim that and you can even say that an entire political party turns into an instrument of that person as most dangerous ideas but what you always have to remember is that the voters are the ones who allow these people to be put in the positions that they're in. Like, yeah, McDaniel and McCarthy and McConnell and the rest of the you know, people running the Republican Party, they didn't really try to stop Trump at all during this primary. There were no anti-endorsements. There were no pleas, don't nominate him. The only people that really spoke up against him where people who are no longer running for anything like Paul Ryan or, or, or Chris Christie or even, you know, William Barr. But when you have people in positions of power that are unwilling to do anything and voters who just are mesmerized by this man, you have to go and critique both sides. You have to say there's something wrong with these people referring to the politicians that run the Republican Party. And with the voters, because they had a field of, what, over t over a dozen candidates who did not have 91 criminal charges in four states, who did not have uh, allegations and even a conviction relating to their relationship with a writer that said that they, you know, grabbed them without consent. So the voters looked at all of this and they were fine with it. And, and really, what, what do you say about a country where its people are so rancid as to be completely okay with voting for someone with that type of, uh, those types of things going on? I mean, these are the same people who not even eight years ago were complaining about Hillary's emails. And, even, and you know, that's, a, that's one of the most corrupt politicians in modern history. But it's like when, when their person has uh, issues that are not normal. They turn a blind eye to it. Oh, it's a, it's a witch hunt. It's all politically motivated. That's why they've never done this to any Republican ever before. It, it was all motivated against him. And I, I just... I, I always want to believe that people have standards, but they don't. They, they, they don't have standards when it comes to who they vote for. They don't have standards when it comes... There's just nothing. There is no, there is no ideology. The, the, the Republican Party, as this article says, is entirely existing to serve the will of one man. And that's why you don't see anyone who's actually in a current sitting position, whether it's in the House, the Senate, state legislator, 
being able to criticize Trump because they're too scared about losing their career uh, by virtue of, you know, not bending the knee, the knee to this man. You know, they're, they're never going to acknowledge that during the 2022 midterm, they lost seats that they thought they were going to win. And many of the people that lost, whether it was Oz in Pennsylvania or uh, Herschel Walker in Georgia, were people that Trump backed, that were people that Trump put on the map and things blew up proportionally for the party, which, you know, I think also is being factored in with the overturning of Roe v. Wade, because like I said, that's that is that has energized voters um, towards the Democratic Party in a, in a way that we have not seen, in, I think, in modern history. Um, but you, you're just never going to see this party move away from Trump until he's out of power. And even then, that still might be debatable, because if he loses this time around, he who's to say he doesn't still run his mouth heading into 2028 about running. And unfortunately, we just we just don't have courageous politicians. They're 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 all just trying to make sure they get reelected. Um, and the Democrats are pretty much the same way with Biden, right? Like we saw during the primary where there's no no ability by any of them to mount a challenge to him. They all come out and endorse him five seconds after he announces he's running for another term. But as bad as their devotion to Biden may be, and really just these parties to their nominees or presidents or whatever, it's, it's like a cult of personality figure. Um, Biden doesn't have anywhere near the amount of legal troubles <laughs> that Trump does. So they don't look as insane for doing it as the Republicans do for, for Trump, the, the law and order party with it, that, that that's going to nominate a person with uh, 91 criminal charges in four States. <laughs> and that's why I said they're a cult because you look at the way that they treat a lot of these other politicians like Liz Cheney, who again, agreed with Trump 90 some percent of the time, according to her voting record in the house. And you know that the only person they care about, is Trump. They're like all all their candidates statewide, nationwide can lose, but as long as Trump and his supporters like that he's the nominee and think he's going to beat Biden, then they're they're fine with being completely wrecked from top to bottom. It's just like Haley said, they they've lost all these different races and you know, they all want to like take a finger and point at Ronald McDaniel, but you you can't look at your nominee and say that that he doesn't have an an impact on that. So I, I usually despise the New York Times. I think they're a rag. Um, but in this case, I have to agree with them. The Republican Party is a cult for Trump. It, it is it is entirely pressed itself on the will of one man. Um, and it's I, I don't know what it's going to take to break away from that. But uh, it's it's not going to happen anytime soon, I can tell you. It, it, we're, we're, we're going to be seeing the cult continue on for probably several more years, if not another decade. 